Estás en el estudio con Dre Big H y Triple C. Hey yo. Silverback Chronicles todos los lunes en todas plataformas. Yo, my peoples, what's up, baby? It's your boys. Silverback Chronicles podcast. It's your boy, Big H. I got my brother, Dre. Good, okay. Ten toes down. What's up, baby? All day, every day. What's good, That's baby? It. Shout out to everybody grinding. Right. Keep working. Triple C. Yo. What's good, baby? Maintain the chilling, bro. As per the norm. You know My peoples, we back. <clears throat> Once again, it's episode 110. 110, we working. Everything is well, everybody's well. Stay safe, keep working hard. Keep squares out the circle, you heard. Um, I want to give a shout out to my brother John Bernthal, Real Ones Podcast. Uh, King Richard played tennis coach. John is a Ray monster. Green. Who? Ray Green, director. Director, Ray Green. We love you, bro. I mean, let me just let me just say this one thing. Let it go. Ray Green is a phenomenal director. He got that gentleman's the one that won the award. Will Smith, he got Will Smith. His first award sure came did. from Ray Green directing that. And of course, JB, you know, anything JB does is gold. Absolutely. But I just want to give a shout out to uh, to Ray Green because during that whole fiasco that happened, you know, the person that accepted the award forgot to mention the director. The reason, the first, the reason why he got that thing. That hardware. So I know we don't got no awards, but yo Ray, you are you our brother and you know we know what it is and and just you know, we're giving you your flowers. Absolutely. And although Green, he the top boy. Of course he did we on the city. Um of course he did King Richard. And his you know, he's got future projects that are gonna be crazy. It's about to be you amazing. Know? So shout out to Ray Green. Absolutely. Folks, don't forget the website, www.silverbackchronicles.com. Get your latest merch. Don't forget the discount code is still 10%. Real ones. All right. R E A L O N E S. Hala. Hala. But with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special guest tonight. A phenomenal man. This guy has a phenomenal resume. And he's only getting better. With no further ado, the red carpet for our special guest. My brother Cap is in the building. What's up, baby? What's up, what's up? Thank y'all for having me. Nah, thank you for coming on, bro. So, bro, please tell the world, where you from, born and raised? I'm uh, from Laurel, Maryland. Pretty much grew up there most of my life. Nice. So, not too far from here. How's Laurel? Um, I like it. I like it. I think it's it, whatever you want. You can have, if you want peace and to stay out the way, you can stay out the way. If you want to get into something, you can go get into it. Um, Baltimore's right there. DC's right there. Right. Obviously, you got a lot of people. Um, you know, the suburbs are changing. You got a lot of people moving from the cities. And so the suburbs today ain't the suburbs that it was 20 years ago. That's a fact. Right. So uh, the world's changing. You got a point there. Where'd you go to high school, bro? I went to Pilate High School. Pilate. Private, private, Catholic, private Catholic school in Laurel, Maryland. Really? Yep. Nice. You play sports in high school, bro? Uh, yeah, wrestled. Ran cross country for a season. Very nice. So what was your dreams and aspirations when you got out of, out of high school, bro? What was something that you always wanted to do? Um, when I, I'll tell you, man, when I got out of high school, I don't know. I really didn't have a, a vision of what I wanted to do. I and think. that's okay. Um, you know, I was a little maybe chasing some of the wrong things at the wrong time. And um, definitely, I loved wrestling, though. I love martial arts, what I've been doing my whole life. Um, so, obviously, was going to college, went to Liberty University, um, wrestled for them. Oh, got, wow. um, my bachelor's in philosophy. Oh, there. shit. So, okay. Um, got the like, call marks on and shit. What's your favorite, like, what's your type? Greek, stoic, like... 
Um, I'm definitely an Aristotelian. Um, he's just one that they were very, um, you know, I learned a lot in high school. He just always stuck with me. Um, I think a lot of his virtue ethics and a lot of the stuff is, is it's all, I think it's all just common sense. I don't think he says anything too right. crazy. For me, that's what philosophy was. It, it was just common sense. Right. I think that a lot of people don't have anymore. It's learning how to think. It's being logical, which, you know, you talk to these people nowadays and it's like, you know, common sense ain't so common no more. Definitely. Right about that. Say that. Definitely. Common sense ain't so common. Wow. I'm heavy into the stoic way. I found that shit after the accident and it's like, I can't get enough of it. You know, like your yeah, yeah, Marcus Aurelius, your yeah, yeah, Seneca. I just found out, bro. I was reading this new book. Um, just read that Seneca was actually from Spain. And it blew my mind. And he's the one that pretty much mentored, you know, the, the Rome's greatest five emperors. He was like in their corner as they, you know, all five of them as they took. And it was like, damn, he was Spanish. I didn't even know that. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. Back in the day, man, the philosophers were the ruling class. Were the ruling class. You know, they were the politicians. You yeah. Know, they were the ones out there in the city. And, you know, I think we need more people just learning philosophy. I think they need to teach that and just basic logic and how to think properly, you know. Yeah. And too many hidden agendas now, so that ain't going to happen unless you mm. go out there and get it yourself. Mm. Mm. That's a fact. Do you have a favorite book? Off the top of my head right now, um, no, nah, I can't say. One of my favorite authors, though, reading was um, Frank Peretti. Um, He's more of like I call it a Christian thriller. I think, you know, like I said, obviously I believe in God, so I also believe in the devil. So same thing, demons, all of that are real. I think he kind of writes, it's almost like horror thrillers, but, you know, at the end of the tunnel, it's got like, you know, a Christian highlight, you know, you see the good in it, so... Um, you know, that's reality. You got to look at both both sides of the things. That's dope. Man. Yeah, for sure. So what do you like to do in your spare time, bro? Uh, like I said, I'm a martial artist, so I love getting in the gym, training. I started with um, Wing Chun, which is non-classical, um, gung fu, learned under Jesse Glover. So that was uh, Bruce Lee's first student and assistant instructor. I trained with him what? about five times. Uh, yeah, my coach, Robert Crawford, shout out to him. He's out Odinson Fitness with Tony Jeter. Um, so, yeah, I trained with him and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Wing Chun. So, yeah, just to be part of that legacy. And, you know, you tell somebody, oh, you trained this guy, Bruce Lee's first. Yeah, whatever bullshit. But, no, I did. You know, I was real young, but just to to have been a part of that legacy, I think, is awesome. And it's just one of those experiences that, Really don't mean nothing, but to me it means a lot. Of course. What what was it that drew you to 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 boxing and MMA or martial arts? Um, I loved the karate kid when I was growing up. So I always wanted uh, to do karate, but you know Daniel because, LaRusso. Yeah. Absolutely. So you it's know, a badass. Flying crane kick, you know. But um we couldn't afford the karate school, so we went to the um, local Lower Boys and Girls Club, um, where I ended up working under Robert Crawford, which is actually better because, you know, Little did I know, you know, karate, especially nowadays, is pretty watered down. And, you know, there's some legit, you know, Kyokushin fighters and some other different, you know, karate fighters that are legit. But, you know, for most part, especially for kids, it's, it's pretty watered down in America and the competition is very watered down. So it was really a blessing, you know, to work with Robert Crawford, Wing Chun, Jiu-Jitsu, being in the boxing gym. H, what was your favorite karate movie growing up? I've got a few. But um, first one was uh, Enter the Dragon. Okay, Bruce Leroy. Cla no, no, no. That's The Last Dragon. Enter the Dragon. Oh, enter the I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Enter Bruce. the Dragon. I'm Bruce, sorry. Whoa. the original. I am so sorry. Please apologize. I, I, yes. yeah, that's... How dare you? Come on. My We're talking fault. Bruce Lee. Yeah, I would never, you know, disrespect... Jim Kelly, bro. Yeah. The original, bro. Okay. Okay. So uh yeah, Last Dragon 2. That, that was a classic. Um I love I love all the Bruce Lee movies. I was I was uh really into that. My favorite one was uh Blood Sport. I never did Karate. Karate. Right. Blood Sport was the one for me. Yo, Van Damme was the guy, bro. Oh man. Yeah. He was the guy. He was pumping them out the movies. I like it was nothing. Oh uh, yo, double impact. Yeah. Blood sport. Yeah. The guy was the beast. Only thing was he couldn't punch. But he kicked the shit out of you, you know, bro. 
But that shows you know the watering down of the taekwondo and How about karate. That? Yeah. That's what you did, taekwondo. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it was one of the two either taekwondo or some t- some form of karate. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Obviously, you know, here in America, in the competition, they don't really allow yeah, strikes was, to the face uh, like that. But, shout out to Steven Seagal. His Steven Seagal was a beast. Man. Yeah, he was a was mark, that, yeah, mark for death. So yeah, was that yeah, yeah. We went up against the Jamaicans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he killed that. Joke. And his fighting style, I couldn't. Uh, anybody know it? Like, is uh, he Akito. used your weight against Akito. you? Yeah, Akito. he used your weight against Akito. you. That was dope. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, his his knuckle game was impeccable. Yeah. Oh no, he was a beast. Between that and the ponytail, <laughs> there was no stopping him. I'm also gonna say yeah. shout out to Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Yeah, Wesley was dope. Wesley was doing his thing. He still is. Yeah. Still I mean, the bull, all the Blade movies are just amazing. Word. I love them. So, bro, when you got inside the, um, what do you call it, the uh, the the octagon, like, what's your go to? Um, what's your go to move? Like, what do you look for when you square up with the opposition? Um, it, it all depends on the setting, you know. If it's competition or if it's out there on the street, you know, it's very no competition. Two competition, bro. yeah. Um, main thing, um, I got a mean um, lower leg kick. You know, I like that. I think it, my legs aren't as flexible. Are you a striker or are you just a submission specialist? Oh, no, I'm a striker as well. I got um, three professional Muay Thai fights out in Thailand. Um, three and oh, all with KOs. In Thailand? Wow. Yeah. Um, That's hard. How, how was that experience, bro? It, it was amazing. Best time of my life. Um, it's dirt cheap. Anybody listening, you know, you could spend a week in Miami or you could spend a month in Thailand. Same thing. You can go to Mexico. There's so many places to travel. Get your passport. Go see the world. Because the world is, man, if you plan it right, it's dirt cheap. I went out there. I didn't know anybody um, except for the guy who owned the gym. I met him, you know, trained with him a little bit in the States. So pretty much just packed up, went over there. And, uh, once my lease, my lease was, uh, well, I found out how, how cheap it was. My lease was about to end. So I was like, man, fuck this. Once the lease is up, I'm gone. So, and you came back to the States. Yeah, I ended up having surgery because I have Crohn's disease. So um, oh, wow. I had to cut the trip short and come back. Ended up having a daughter now, so couldn't go back. So oh, I'm God bless, she, bro. That's wait awesome. Wait until she's a little older, and then um, definitely get, you know, once my everything's straight back uh, in life, I'll get back over there soon. That's awesome. Yo, I really respect you because you do have Crohn's disease, and from what I understand, like, it, make, it makes you weak, right? Yeah, And yeah. you still get up and bang. Every day you get up and bang, dog. I try to. That's something I've really been questioning myself these past couple of weeks lately. Like, yeah, I'm a fighter. I can step in the ring. And, you know, yeah, Crohn's, for those that are listening that don't know, it's an autoimmune disorder. Uh, 90% of your immune system is in your digestive system. So all the way from my mouth, all the way my butthole is inflamed. I've had a couple surgeries. Um, I'm on Remicade infusion. I go to the hospital once a month and hook up to the IV machines. They pump me with the medicine. Um, so... But at the end of the day, to me, you know, that that's still an excuse. It, it's a legit excuse. It's legit, but it's still an excuse. And so that's something I've really been questioning myself. Am I really a fighter? Because there's been those times where I can't get up and go work out. It's like, I'm quitting. I'm not being a fighter. So that's something I've been struggling with lately. But, um, yeah, I hope I can motivate people, you know, get out there. And that's why I like fighting too martial arts. It forces me to eat right. You know, especially with Crohn's, I got to watch what I'm eating. I got to sleep right. Got to work out just to keep my health. You know, keep from staying out of hospital. So, um, I, wow. I'm I'm grateful for it. I think you know, um, it could always be worse. It could be cancer. It might turn into cancer, but it's definitely rough. Um, it's very painful. It, it's excruciating pain. But at the end of the day, I'm thankful for it. I thank God for it because I think I'd be a little bitch if I didn't have it. So it definitely made me toughen up all the pain I go through just on a daily basis. Um, so I'm you gotta be thankful for it. And no, that's awesome. It. Wow, that's dope, man. <sighs> It's good to know that. It's tough. Talk about facing adversity and overcoming it, huh? Hell yeah. Like I said, I don't feel like I'm overcoming it lately, but I'm trying. I'm going to keep pushing and I'm fighting. So, I mean, it's something that you can't control, bro. Yeah. You feel I mean, sluggish. It just comes with the territory. So, like, like, you went to Thailand, 3-0, and oh, and you have this condition. Like, you went to, like, the belly of the beast because them Thai fighters... No joke. Like yeah, them kicks ain't no joke. Even the little kids out there, some teenagers out there will come out here uh-huh. and fuck grown men up. And those foot sweeps. You know, I wrestled in college, and you know, I know one hundred fifteen pound women. Yeah, I mean, I'm only one thirty, but little women they'll sweep me off my feet like it's nothing. You know, so them, them ties are no joke. 
Um, but yeah, get out there. It's dirt cheap. They're very peaceful. Would you go to Phuket? Um, I was in Chiang Mai. I want, like I said, I was gonna. I planned to travel around a little bit, but obviously, I ended up having to have the surgery, and um, so I cut the trip short. Hopefully, you'll go back there. No, we so, definitely will. So what? Uh, so what do you have your days where it really gets to you, like your body? How how does that work? What what's the day in the life for you? Yeah. Um. Sorry for some of the viewers. Some of the details might get a little rough to talk about, but um. Everybody's yeah, gone. definitely. Um. For me lately, you know, um, I've had a couple surgeries down on you know my rectum area. Um. So that's usually inflamed. Um. I'm bleeding a lot. A lot of times, you know, I just wake up in the morning, middle of the night, and you know, just you know, shitting a lot of blood and. It's very painful, colon just on fire, and you're know, just not feeling like, man, I'm supposed to get up, work out, and it's just, I'm just feeling a little off, and it just, it just makes it rough, so. Um, and you still go in and work out? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get back, I gotta get around the right people. I found out if I do it by myself, you know, I half ass to work out, or something comes up like, oh, I don't feel good, but when I'm around other people, um, I feel good, I forget all about that, and I go have a killer workout, so just really trying to surround myself with the right people, um, that's all. That's dope. So, uh, what do you want? You want to go professionally with this? Um, yeah, like I said, I've got a couple. Um, pro- my fights were uh, Muay Thai; they were professional. I've got some professional jujitsu experience. Um, I just got my license in the fall um, for professional boxing. So, probably looking to get something in the fall. Um, I did the bare knuckle FC tryouts. So that's a really big organization I'm looking to fight for. I was one of the top picks at the tryouts. Um, so just waiting on my managers and the time and right, and hopefully they'll give me a fight soon. How was that <coughs> bare knuckle experience? Um, yeah, like I said, um, my experience was a little bit different. Um, like I said, I went out to the tryouts though. Um, there was about maybe 80, hundred people there. So it was definitely deep. It was out in Fort Lauderdale last August. Um, Jared, uh, Grant, um, he's just, he just won the interim championship, bantamweight championship at 135. So shout out Jared Grant um, and all the slaughterhouse guys down there. Um, they down there putting in work. So, um, yeah, like I said, I was one of the top picks at the tryouts. If you go look at on the BK TV app, you download it. You can um, you can subscribe and you can see um, I'm on the episode. If you look out at the tryouts, they got a little bit of me on there telling my story. So, like I said, just waiting for a fight. Haven't got a fight yet. So, um, hopefully they get me a fight because uh, really I don't see any threats in the 125 pound division. Mm. Um, they got some okay fighters that you know give me give me in the work. Uh, let me get back in shape and they'll definitely run through those guys. Mm. I can definitely see me getting that 125 pound belt in the BKFC. That's what I'm talking about. That's dope. So how, you go ahead, but, bro. Not good. How, but like, how was it? Like, so it's a hundred dudes. What they make you do, like, kind of... Like, yeah, so we start off with, like, a mile run, um, just doing basics. Then they have you shadow boxing and doing, like, you know, some drills and whatnot. You move. Basically, see, can you move? Can you fight? Uh, they put you on the bag, put you on the mitts. Um, so it was definitely a workout. Um, getting down there, you know, um, was rough already. They had delayed my flights. So I almost didn't make it. I found out about the tryouts last minute. I said, oh, well, let me go do it. I, it sounds like a good opportunity. I said, I know if I get down there, I know they'll give me a contract. So sure enough, I went down there, was the top pick. Uh, I did what I had to do. You know, the Jared Grant was the trial host. So as soon as he ran, I was right there in his ear, running behind him, talking with him, um, shadow boxing around him, making sure everybody see me who needed to. So hopefully they give me a matchup soon. That's dope. So bare knuckle, bare knuckle, was it, was it bare knuckle boxing? Yes, sir. Yeah, they just fight with hand wraps. And it's a ring, right? Yeah, it's hand wraps, not over the knuckle. So right up. Just about a centimeter below from the top of the knuckle. So no glove, no love. Woo. Damn. <laughs> so it's a huge promotion, though. So I, I really, I just want to do it to get my name out there and um, make a name for myself. Like I said, it's a huge platform. So You know Tony Jetta? Yeah, yeah. You never thought about boxing? Um, No, I'm definitely, like I said, I, I was going to talk to him soon. I had already... Um, last fall, we were talking about getting on a card. So I plan on hitting him up soon. I know him personally. You know, I know Tony, but I got his phone right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's my man, Tony. I trained him. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. a good guy. Yeah, no, Tony the man. Yeah, he's doing uh, his thing. He's Brandon doing his Chambers. Thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we know Chambers, too. Yep. So. They're a friend of ours. They did the episodes. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's great, man. Whew. 
So, yeah, I think, you know, like I said, God's just working on getting everything into place for me so I can be more disciplined and uh, hopefully make a name for myself soon. The bare knuckle doesn't bother you, like cuts and stuff like that, eye injuries? and. I mean, I haven't had a fight yet, so we'll see how it goes. You know, all my street fights, thank God, you know, I've came out like this and mm -hmm. do my work. You've always come out like this, so... Um, obviously, it's different in professional setting, but um, like I said, it's a huge organization, so you gotta, you know, yeah, you gotta risk it. Try to make something for myself. So you street fights with like like the Kimbo Slice joints, like back in the day, or like oh, not like that. I oh, just okay. meet on the street, and then um, so I was, I was law enforcement as well, so right. just okay. working as law enforcement. Got you. Um, oh, okay, I thought you meant like y'all was like backyard, like Kimbo joints. Like I mean, I've done out. I've done some of okay. that too, but no, okay. So. Well, what, what, what's your nine to five currently? Um, right now, so I was working as a um, special police officer in D.C. How's that? Um, it's a job. Do you meet a lot of adversity? Oh, yeah, definitely on a daily basis. So, you know, you don't get respect from anybody, you know. Um, so you're hired. At, you, you're hired. So what a D.C. special police officer is, you're a fully commissioned police officer in mm -hmm. the Washington, uh, D.C. area. But you're hired through... Um, private security company. So you're hired for security purposes. But um, the way my man, Johnny Harris, shout out to Johnny Harris. He was my partner with me. Um, he holds the record um, for the lightest person to ever bench over 700. So make sure you follow him, Johnny Harris, look out for him. But yeah, he said, you are what you want to be. You know, if you want to be a security guard and that's what you are. And that's what the community is going to treat you as. You want to be a police officer and that's what they're going to treat you as. So like I said, it's a job. Um, you don't really get the respect from the community they think oh you're just a security guard then same thing with um you know the dc police there a lot of them you know unless they know you and they seen you work a lot of them are just like oh you know you're just the spo or whatever but so wh wh where were you um where do you work at like a all over dc um i mainly i spent my first two years on minnesota avenue okay um doing the mcdonald's duty Nice. So I don't know if any if y'all ever done McDonald's duty, but that's probably the worst job I've ever done in DC. <laughs> I was making shit change, well making shit. Um, every day somebody come in there and go, damn, I thought I had a bad job. You know, wow. same thing. Even um, MPD, the DC police, you know, they were like, you couldn't pay me enough to stand in this shithole. You know, they say I got more respect for you than I do myself. Mm. You know, I you know first three months anywhere they send you is rough. You know, they're like, who's this white boy? You know. You got to make a name for yourself. Yeah, show them. yeah, you know, so I definitely, you know, you got to show show them who you are. But at the end of the day, um, I did. I think I did my job real well. I got the respect of the community. Uh, the community loved me. Um, and the people that were hiring me there, they felt safe. You know, I did my job. Let's do So I wasn't robocop. People think, oh, I'm pressing you out. No, just whatever you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. You take it somewhere else. Mm. So I'm not pressed to lock you up. I don't want to be locked up my damn self, you know. If I locked you up, you was a real problem. You did something serious or you was just a pain. Like, I dealt with you every day for two months, all day long. Enough is enough. Enough, enough. I'm done with you. So you got policing powers, too. Yeah, yeah we arrest the powers. You carry everything the D.C. police carry. Nice. So, yeah, we're fully sworn uh, police officers. But Good for you, bro. Real rent-a-cops, so. Listen. You work hard, bro. They work in the trenches, no radio, no backup. So it really? is really it's, it's just you. Yeah, um some gigs you you get um you can get a partner, but like I said, a lot of these SPOs, man, I mean for the most part they don't radio. Yeah. We don't have a dispatch. Some some companies oh. you work for have a dispatch. Obviously the ones, you know a lot of these companies are cheap too, so they're very cheap. Um, a lot of these uh, security companies, man, they're grimy. So I'm looking to get out of the industry, man. They, they, they'll they make you work overtime without paying you overtime. They'll try wow. to send you money through Cash App this way to avoid different things. And the, you, never, you never thought about going to uh, uh, the PD? Yeah, I tried it. It didn't work out. You know, like I said, I think God's plans. I tried to, like two different departments. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, it didn't work out. Everyone's like, oh, you got to keep trying. It took me three departments. It took me five departments, man. You ever, trying tr to you ever tried Baltimore City? Yeah, it, man, the process is just so taxing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it takes at least, you know, minimum six months. I got to take day off here, go drive here, got to do this, got to do that. Jump all, jump through all these hoops and hurdles. And yeah, 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 yeah. And then no. So I'm uh, I'm tired of getting played with. I feel you. You know, I thank God. Like I said, it's God's plan where he's got me. So I'm not. I definitely question every day, like, God, ah, what's going on? But, you know, I, I trust him. Absolutely. So. <laughs> How do you feel? How do you feel being a dad? Um, my story is a little bit different with it. Um, 
So, yeah, uh, my daughter's only one and a half. Obviously, I love her. She's beautiful. Congrats. So, but, um, you know, just be careful who, who you have kids with. That's really all I can say. You know, <laughs> being a man, the, the worst thing you can have, the biggest stress right now is that I got somebody else raising my daughter in this world that, you know, you don't really agree with their lifestyle. Um, I did 600 hours of overtime last year um, to pay for my custody lawyer. Um, wow. So I'm working all that helping her pay her rent and I'm paying my lawyer while she won't let me see my child for six months. So there's a lot of other crazy stuff. I don't want to go into all the details, but, um, that's another fight. <laughs> so I finally, you know, went to court, you know, I've got primary custody. Nice. So good for um, you. Obviously things are still rough, but you know, I'm hoping that, you know, obviously I got to change me too in certain things too, but you know, I just, I try to pray, give that to God and let God work us out so we can, you know, be good co-parents and, you know, raise a beautiful, healthy daughter. And it's a rough world to have a daughter in right now. You get a lot of help from your family? You said family? For, for my family? Yeah. Not, yeah. Uh, I don't really have too much family right now, so. Okay. Um, yeah. My mom, though, yeah, she's always there for me, though, so. That's dope. Shout out to mom. Yeah. How, how did your training help you out in, the, in like, law enforcement? <clears throat> um... For me, you know, it was great. Obviously, being small, people are like, who are you? You know, so my main thing was grappling, wrestling in college, um, jiu-jitsu, all in life, you know, purple bone jiu-jitsu. So I think as a cop, all cops should know that. You still um, hold the purple belt? Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. washed up purple belt. I need to get back on the mats and really train. And, you know, the game has evolved so much. But the biggest thing, like I said, for cops it come, is the wrestling aspect, the hand fighting. When you get in somebody in, in handcuffs and not being scared, the fact that, you know, I'm not scared. I don't, you know, if, if you're scared, you know, obviously the public can or whoever you're dealing with, they can tell whether you're scared and they're going to pick up on it. Mm -hmm. But once, you know, a couple of people see you put somebody down on the ground, no problem. Twice your size. They're like, all right, we're going to. Um, so even went viral a couple of times doing a, um, just simple takedowns. Nothing crazy, nothing aggressive. I always use an outside trip, which I think all law enforcement should know. Um, it's not, you know, a blast double. I'm not picking somebody up, slamming them on the ground. Right. Obviously, you know, the concrete and the pavement is not, you know, forgiving. But if you got to take somebody, if I got to take somebody down to the ground, you know, that's where we're going to go. Right. If I feel like you're going to resist or run or start swinging, we're going to go to the ground because I know that I'm going to be able to control you. And eventually you're going to give up. You're going to put the cuffs on. Mm -hmm. Even if I even if I let them, even if I take them back off for five minutes, at least now you know you know. Right, like the pavement has never lost a fight before. Never. Yeah, there there was one time I, I like to say the outside trip is very nice, and it, it, you know it, it's definitely you know like I said you're not slamming somebody, you're not judo throwing somebody. So all the time I've done it hundreds of times in law enforcement, nobody got hurt. Um, like I said, because you, you're taking someone down as gently as you can, you're landing in control, except for one guy. Um, he did hit the curb one time. There was a curb right there. I did, you know, I was going to um, detain him, put him in handcuffs. Um, he started pulling away. I don't do that. As soon as you pull away, okay, boom. As soon as I know we're resisting, okay, boom, we're going down to the ground. So I did outside trip, but the, the curb was right there, unfortunately for him. But I mean, he was all right. He was a little banged up, but he was all right. So, but I didn't have to, that's the biggest thing. I don't have to punch anybody in the face. I don't think punching in law enforcement is good. The only time I've, how to use punches is um, when I'm being jumped. You know, if I got five, six people running at me, yeah, you, you're going to have to throw some kicks and punches. You got to circle and tunnel your attackers. But other than that, even if somebody's resisting, maybe one or two body strikes. But th this punching in the head, who's going to take their hands from under them and off their face while you're punching them in the head or slamming their face in the concrete? Nobody. It, you're not, you know, it, it don't matter how calm and you, they're not going to do that. Same thing with these cops that are like, oh, well, I'm not touching that person. That, that's one thing in law enforcement. You you have to um, touch some some very nasty, disgusting people. You got people that are covered in shit, vomit, who knows what. And there's some cops like, well, I'm not touching them. I'm going to just punch them in the face and knock them out. I, I, I guess you're justified to me. Morally, no, you're not. If you know jujitsu, you should. That's what you should be doing. If you can't, if you're not willing to tackle this nasty guy, then I don't think you should be in law enforcement. Mm. That's how I feel. You know, I mean, that's a big discussion nowadays. You know, like even like, uh, well, to go back to your outside trip, it looks clean as fuck. You know, outside trips, it doesn't look like like you said a double blast. It ain't 
picking you up, slamming you down. It's a trip. So, like, it looks good. It looks good. But, like, law enforcement is moving away from that, from the strikes and stuff. But at the end of the day, the lawmakers got to understand it's a fight. Yeah. So, like, you know, you move, I move. And if, you know, it's it's a fight. Like, they can't, you really can't, like, put a cap on a fight. You see what I'm saying? Because this is not UFC. This ain't bare knuckle where you're dealing with, like, two people that came. It was like, let's fight for this. This is a person that's in the street. They don't have any rules. And we have all the rules. But I do agree, like, body, body strikes are... A little bit more, I like that better. But sometimes, if you gotta, if you gotta punch somebody, you gotta punch somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what I'm talking about is, you see, maybe I got two or three guys trying to on top of a suspect, trying to get his hands out, and they're on top throwing strikes to the head. Well, oh, I see what you're saying. What do you? Come on. Why would he? Why would he not? Why would he stop protecting himself while you're continuing to assault him? It doesn't make any sense. You know, that's where you got pressure points and joint locks and other ways of. You know, it's a lot of risk manipulation as well. That's your you know, right so there. I'm not saying that, you know, strikes aren't allowed. I think just a lot of what we see, you know, like I said, that's us also changed policing too a lot. You know, the, the oh, camera yes. has changed it a lot. The camera, yep. You know, um, I think it's just um, some officers overdo it with the strikes. Yeah, like yeah. I said, if you don't have any yeah. ground fighting, then of course, that's what you're going to do. Well, too. they, they so. just take it personal and it shouldn't be personal. It should be to, you know, gain, you know, that individual placing them into cuffs, using submissions, arrest techniques. A lot of them go away from that once they get hit because a lot of them never been hit before. But I definitely get, you know, the premise to what you're stating does make sense. Um, You know, law enforcement is tough. And uh, there's a lot more liability time. now than, than what it's ever been. And uh, they are going away from being, you know, hands-on, which puts a lot of officers in tough positions given, you know, the individual that they're dealing with and whatever that situation is. Because sometimes you just have to go hands-on depending on, you know, what what you're, what you're in that, depending on what the call is for when you, once you meet that individual. But um, it's just a tough gig all around, man. Definitely. But like when we when we used to ride around, we never went to the, the tools on the belt because he's very proficient with the hands in boxing, and I, I'm okay with the with the red, you know little MMA stuff. So at the end of the day, we get the person in, in custody, and you what you walk away with a little scratch, a little bump and bruise. Now these guys, you know, they're not training, and it's like they go to the belt. Taser, taser, taser. And it's like, it just gets ugly. That's one good thing. Um, in D.C., um, only the sergeants can carry tasers. For MPD. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, Metro Transit, they carry tasers. But yeah, um, MPD, it's got to be sergeants yeah. and above. I don't want none of that. And like really? I said, there's so many times they fail, so I wouldn't trust it. And to me, to be honest, I, I, you know, what's more effective, a taser or OC? OC. Or just, I, I'd rather be I've, I've been tased before I've been OC sprayed I'd, I'd rather be tased it's only a few seconds that OC lasts yeah it does last and I, that's where um, I've, the only time I've really resorted to that is when it's crowds when I've got huge crowds you know I got 12 people 5 people whatever jumping somebody or it's mm-hmm. 12 on 12 whatever you know they all oh spray me whatever you know, I, I've been in jail you know I, whatever as soon as you pull that can out they all get to running so that's, that's really the only time I've had to use it um the best way to control a situation is having a calm head, pause, and uh, speaking to the individual. Yeah, it's all about how you how you speak to people. Like I said, community policing we very, really need. Absolutely. Being professional. Um, that's one thing, too. Like I said, like I'm out there, no radio, no backup. If yeah. um, I got, you know, 12 people loitering on the side of the building, you know, weighing up their drugs, drinking, whatever, smoking, whatever. You know, how are you going to get them to move? I'm this new white boy on the scene in the hood. We, we, how are you going to carry it? So a lot of times I typically, I say, oh, we out here drinking, smoking. We partying. You ain't invite me. That's fucked up. We got to move it now. So a lot of times, you know, they'll laugh. All right, we got you, OG, or whatever. You know, they move. They respect it. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you know, and 
it's all about just trying to make people laugh, you know, because a lot of this stuff, it, 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 it's, it's not serious. You got to think this is where people live. People are going to drink, they go smoke, they're going to hang out. Absolutely. So, you know, everybody's a human, you know. Um, even the guy that stole was, you know, as a repeat offender, even the, the guy that's stealing, whatever, he's a human too, man. Get to talk with him. And sometimes I got to do my job, you know, even Definitely. if we're good buddies and I got to lock you up, you know, they're going to have more respect for you. You're like, man, my bad cap, damn, I fucked up this time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you like the profession, bro. Where are you going away from it? Yeah, I'm trying. Like I said, it, 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 I like the work. I like dealing with the community. Uh, being an SPO sucks. Like I said, the pay is not great. I finally got up to a decent pay rate. You don't got no backing. Um, you know, if something happens and you're suspended, you're out without a paycheck versus if you're working for the city, you're on desk duty somewhere. Right. You don't get respect. But I like interacting with the community. Um, I think as being a martial artist and a philosopher, it's a perfect profession. You're just wow. walking around talking and just trying to keep the peace, just trying to keep everybody safe. That's all. That's dope. That is dope. That is absolutely dope, bro. So moving forward, bro, you know, what's, what's, what's the game plan five years from now? You want to be in uh, the bad local boxing thing? Yeah, I like guess I'm about to be 28 in about 20 days. So trying and with the Crohn's, I don't see me fighting too much longer. So maybe another five, seven years. So just trying to do something with it now. Um like I said, I've been questioning. I didn't get a fight lately, and I was working all this overtime. Um, I recently got suspended at work, so apparently they just said my license. We just checked. Now my license is active, so I don't. My commission is active. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. The whole the DC government. There's no communication. But yes, yeah, so basically, a guy pulled a knife on me. He ended up walking away. He needed a few stitches. You know, I could have justifiably shot the guy, but right now, just standard investigation. So they suspended me. So I've been out of work for three months. Um, at first, I was like, man, this is great. You know, so I wanted to take off anyways for court because I was coming up on court mm -hmm. getting my child. So I was like, this is great. I'm going to take time off. I'm a train. Now it's been over three months without a paycheck. And it's just like, now nah, I don't got no money. I'm starting. I was like, God, what's going on? But um, he recently, I got a, um, it ain't official yet, but I just got a job at uh, Mayweather Boxing nice. in Alexandria. Also at um, Elite Boxing in Columbia. So I'll be back in the gym training. So it's good. I think God is moving me there. So I'll be in the gym training, um, just around other fighters in that atmosphere. It'll help me, like I said, just get back to training, being disciplined. And um, hopefully soon they also let me get back to work. And then I'll just work maybe, you know, 30 hours a week mm -hmm. doing that too. Just so I can go. keep my creds. And I like doing it as well. That's dope. Good uh -huh. for you, bro. See, so it just... Really, you know, trying to trust God's plan right now. Everything's up in the air right now, especially the past three months have been life changing. Um, a lot of soul searching. So I finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. So hopefully I can be disciplined and just make it all work. Like I said, my goal is just train, travel the world, um, studying martial arts, competing. Um, that's all just just about peace. You know, I just want to have peace. And raise that beautiful daughter of yours. Yeah, spend time with her. Definitely. Good Which fight is in the, uh, that that's at the top of the hill in bare knuckle back and you want to call out? You know, we you know we make sure we blast it. Yeah, we gonna, man, we gonna blast it. Out any of the one twenty five pound fighters, the man. Whole, I've whole. already had a uh, shout out to my guy rookie Randall. He's actually um, top four, so I want my fighting him. He was at the tryouts. Um, I was even in the documentary. I was one of the top picks. They already got him some fights. You know, no disrespect to him. He's a good fighter, but he's he's already top four. He's got another fight this Friday, uh, Saturday, actually. You so I'll probably, him? um, yeah, I'm gonna be watching him. So he'll probably be up in the rankings too. Let's so that, go. That's good. I, I expect him to win. He's gonna move up in the rankings, and he's a good fighter, but he can't beat me. So nice. damn, 125, huh? Yes, sir. My man, who you, who you like uh, uh, coming up? Was it Spence? And was it you? You guys. Yeah, you guys. Who you like there? Man, I like Spence, but hearing you guys' story, man, you know, with fleeing Cuba, getting locked up, what, six times or so, trying to flee the country, man, you got to, yeah, that, that, that's heavy, man. You can't, how can you not root for a guy like that? I love them both. Um, you guys is a Cuban fighter. Cuban fighters are no joke. And he's just a, he's a monster. He can box with you. He can brawl with you. That's going to be a scary fight. You got a good chin? Does he? Whew. Dude, he's a monster, bro. Uh, Spence, I love Spence. Spence can do it all. He can box with you. He can brawl with you. He can go punch for punch with you. And he's a southpaw. Whew. It's tough. It's going to be a great fight. I can't choose nobody. I really can't. I just want it to be a great fight. 
How about with uh, Devin Haney? I'm going with Haney on uh, with uh, Cam Bros. I like Cam. I like Cam. I love Cam. He's a great fighter, but I think Haney his boxing IQ is just a little bit. I think he he's gonna edge him as far as uh, points and the kind of the, and the type of style uh, Devin Haney has. He's not a brawler. He's a finesse, and he can box his ass off. Cam Bros can fight too. That's gonna be a great fight, but I think with the reach. And um, Devin Haney's the bigger guy, naturally the bigger guy. He's going to take Cambros's go-to out of the way. And just, he's going to put his, he's going to put a plethora of punches together. Devin Haney's a monster. He could, he's a very smart boxer. But uh, I'm going to go with Haney edging uh, Cam. Who you like, Cam? Man, Haney and Cambosis, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of both guys as well. Same thing. I think I told you earlier when we were talking, oh, there's not really too many I don't really root for too many people. Like I said, both these fights we were just talking about, I, I don't really, I'm not really necessarily rooting for somebody, but if I had to pick, I'd probably lean more towards Ugas and same thing with the Cambosis. Uh, I'd probably lean a little more towards Cambosis. I, I really don't care who wins. I think they're both going to be excellent fights. I mm -hmm. look forward to watching just for them fighting. Mm -hmm. It don't matter to me who wins or loses. Just the fact that we're finally, we, you know, a lot of times in boxing, it's hard to get the fights you want. Absolutely. Yeah. Same thing like with um, Davis and Garcia, all those guys, Teofimo, Cambosis, Haney. I want them all to do like a round robin tournament. Fuck the belts. <clears throat> Just best two out of three for everybody. They're not going to do it. Though. I know they're not going to, but that that as a real martial artist, that's what. Right, for the fight we want real uh, fights. As a real fighter, that's what I want to see. Hopefully Tank uh, step up and stop playing. But let me ask y'all both. As boxing fans. And he's been calling him out. Gary Russell Jr. has been calling him out for years now. Mm. But Floyd and them been smart with him. They been smart. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask y'all. Is, is it the folklore of the undefeated? Because, you know, when we grow up with boxing, like, again, our generation, you know, I get it, the Ali's, the so-and-so, but ours pretty much starts to like the Mike Tyson. Undefeated. And it's like when you lose, it's just a little small chip. But, like, you know, being around Dre, being around some of the other guys at the MMA, it's about the fight. It's about the the two men and who's the best, regardless of record or this, that, and the fourth. Who are the best two guys? Boxing, if two undefeateds get together, it's like everybody want to watch it. You know, so do y'all how how do you change that folklore when it's, you know, always about somebody being undefeated? Like, you know, you can't take a loss in boxing. Uh, you know what? If you could fight, you could fight. It is, I mean, Miguel Cotto, go down in, in boxing history, is one of the greatest. And he got a couple of L's, but Miguel could fight. He changed his style of fighting like three times in his career. And he got better as he got older. And he learned how to you know, box and, 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 and choose his, I think his, uh, Freddie Roach came in there and switched his whole game plan he up. He did. Yeah, it was Freddie Roach. So, Yeah. If you can fight, you can fight. I, I think this whole undefeated thing, I think it's more of just an American thing. And I think it really just comes down to social media and all these keyboard mm -hmm. warriors. Because your real fans are going to keep fucking with you whether you lose or not. 100%. And real fighters, you know, they don't care. It, you know, yeah, it sucks to lose. But I think it's more of just this ego thing and this social media kind of thing. I think that's kind of where it stems mm -hmm. from. Um, this ego and, and, you know, of course, you know, if you're undefeated, you get the biggest bag. So it's all about the money. But then, especially in boxing, too, like I said, you look at, you know, a lot of it's padded, you know, especially at least the first five fights. You look at these guys' records and it's... Can of tunas, bro. Like I said, I'm not hating on them. <laughs> business is business. Same thing. That's that's what I plan to do with the fight game is just use it to promote myself and get my name out there, you know. Right. You can go the honor route and try to, you know, really be a fighter or you can use it as a business route. I, I kind of want to do both, but I think, you know, it's a business. You know, get my name out there and establish myself to really figure out what I want to do and then use that as a marketing tool. Smart man. I like it. Yeah. So, bro, you got any uh, shout outs you want to give out before we wrap this thing up? Uh, yeah, shout out Tony Jeter, Brandon Chambers. That's my guy. Since they all fam that we yeah, know. Absolutely. Um, shout oh, out yeah. Ginger Blast. Um, that's G I N G A Blast. Um, my man Biz, he owns a company, Black Owned Business. Um, company's grown huge. It's all organic, um, infused honey and agave with turmeric and all the stuff that's good for you. It's all natural, holistic medicine. So shout out to Biz and Ginger Blast. Um, yeah, go ahead. Shout out. Check out their products. Don't. 
Appreciate you coming on. I man. appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for having me. Give my man a fight. Stop playing. Yeah, BKFC. What's up, man? Stop holding out. Stop sleeping on your boy. Y'all looking real scared because y'all ain't giving more fights. Man, 125. I'm telling you, there's nobody in there that can touch me. He said it. You heard it first. Dre, you got anything else? Peace and love, my brother. Triple C. Blessed are the peacemakers. Fellas, my peoples. It's episode 110. I want to thank my brother Cap for coming on, man. He's got a great story, and he's hungry. He's humble, and he's hungry to get out there and uh, display his talents. So, um, bare knuckle boxer, stop playing. Get that man out there so he can show his talents and collect a nice check for his family. My peoples, we love you. We appreciate you. Like I said, it's episode 110. We're just working and bringing you phenomenal content. We appreciate you. Stay safe. We love you. I'll see you next week. Peace! The views and opinions expressed on the Silverback Chronicles podcast are those of the hosts, producers, and or the guest appearing on the program. They do not reflect the views and opinions of the federal, state, or local government. This includes but not exclusive to the Department of Defense, Homeland, and the Baltimore City Police Department. The Silverback Chronicles podcast with Dre, Big H and Triple C. Hit the subscribe button, like and comment.